So I would like to start with two remarks. Um, in, the begin in the morning, uh, Petros mentioned some of our concrete successes and some of our aspirations. I would like to add two. One is that uh, the one of uh, I've been coming to Greece now for about 40 years every summer to be a participant in a conference, a workshop like this, uh, where you have some of the best uh, Greek scientists and engineers who genuinely care about the country and would be willing to come back is inspiring. So um, organizing that, it is already a small accomplishment. The second thing I would like to mention is uh, I often ask myself about criteria under which I will know in 10 years from now whether this was a worthwhile effort or not. Typically, all these efforts pay dividends in the, over time, not uh, one year. So one criterion I put for myself, this is my personal opinion, not necessarily shared by the rest of the highest members, although I suspect they will be positive on that view, is that 10 years from now, uh, if, if uh, the Hellenic Institute of Advanced Studies is, uh, is being asked, let's say, by the Greek government, by the Greek universities, by the Greek industry to help in whatever they, they, um, they are willing to, to ask, but Hayas is the recipient of such questions or challenges, that would be a win. Uh, and at least personally, I would aspire for such uh, an engagement. Coming back now to the particular panel, uh, so what do we aspire to achieve? So in recent decades, countries like Israel, Finland, Estonia, these are European countries, uh, consider uh, Israel also a European country, have increased their GDPs quite sizably, primarily based on innovation and entrepreneurship. A question that I'm hoping we can give some answers to, at least some insights, is can Greece increase the level of entrepreneurship and innovation, number one? Second, uh, how can the, the HIAS help in these endeavors? We have gathered today uh, some very distinguished people. They have three characteristics. Number one, they are all distinguished scientists and engineers. Second, they have all been successful entrepreneurs and innovators. And quite importantly, third, they care about the country. I know I happen to know this personally and want to give back. Thank you for accepting. Um, so, as I mentioned, our first presentation is by Dr. Nectarius Tavernarakis. I'll be brief on my introductions. They deserve far more, otherwise we'll be here until seven. Uh, so, Nectarius is a professor of molecular systems biology at the Medical School of the University of Crete. And in all, it's also heading the Neurogenics and Aging Laboratory at the Institute of Molecular Biology and Biotechnology at the Foundation of the Research and Technology, last in Heraklion. And he's the current chair of the European Institute of Innovation and Technology, to the best of my knowledge, the first member and chair in this significant European body. And uh, Nectario, the, the, the floor is yours. So thank you very much, Dimitri. It's uh, really an honor for me to be among such distinguished scientists. Uh, thank you for the invitation. So what I'm uh, uh, planning to do today is really uh, um, tell you a few things about what is being done in Europe uh, to foster innovation, to foster entrepreneurship and uh, generation of value based on knowledge. And then uh, maybe discuss uh, uh, what can we learn from this experience and uh, how we, can we implement uh, perhaps similar approaches uh, for Greece. So uh, actually today's discussion is very reminiscent of what was happening in Europe, uh, the discussion that was going on, the debate that was going on back in the early 2010s. And then at the time uh, we had this very profound realization that in Europe we are very good at turning euros to knowledge, but we are not that good at turning knowledge to euros, which means wealth, of course, jobs, uh, societal impact in general. So this was realized back then. Uh, it was the time after the uh, recession, as you know, uh, the global uh, fi uh, financial difficulties and the crisis. So Europe was emerging uh, through that crisis and there was this realization, what should be done then? Now, how does this compare with what is happening to Greece now? Of course, here, 
it's again debatable, but I think we can uh, to some extent say safely that we are good at turning euros to knowledge. Maybe uh, some people might not agree that we are that good. Of course, we are not as good as we could, that's for sure. But we, we do have some uh, evidence that this is happening, and I'll show you, I'll show you those um, uh, points uh, and, and the evidence later on. But what uh, we are really uh, lagging desperately behind is uh, the other step, the step of converting knowledge to wealth for society, to, to, know, to, to money, to jobs, to societal impact. And this is, of course, something that we need to do. We need to foster uh, uh, both uh, research and innovation in order to be able to achieve this final goal. Uh, uh, research is really the, the process that generates the raw material, material that is required for innovation, at least knowledge-based innovation, because as you know, we also have other kinds of innovation not related to knowledge. But uh, here we are discussing uh, this conversion of knowledge to wealth to uh, societal impact. Now, at the time, uh, Europe, of course, mobilized and uh, created instruments in order to, to achieve this goal. Uh, the very recent instrument that was just started a year ago is Horizon Europe, as you know. Uh, so uh, within the framework of Horizon Europe, Horizon Europe, as you see, is a, is a very big program uh, uh, of a budget of about 96 billion euro. I'll show you some of the details uh, later on. There are different components. I'm not going to go into each and every component. I'm going to just focus on those that are relevant to today's discussion. So. I'll uh, essentially present information about three such components, three instruments of Horizon Europe that I think are relevant to our discussion today. The first is the European Research Council, of course, uh, which is part of Pillar 1, uh, focusing on excellent science. And uh, the second is the European Innovation Council, uh, together with the European Institute of Innovation and Technology that Dimitris uh, mentioned earlier which are both part of Pillar 3 that, uh, that is focusing on innovation, on, on uh, generating value, generating uh, new products, innovative products and services that would then uh, reach the market. And this is done, of course, through very generous uh, financial support. So, for example, for the ERC, we have a budget of 16 billion euro, more than 16 billion euro. This is actually going to increase once we have contributions from associated countries, because uh, nowadays a pay-as-you-go model is uh, implemented by the European uh, Commission. So any associated country, for example, uh, Switzerland, uh, Israel, maybe the UK, now that uh, Boris is out, uh, will contribute to the budget. And this is going to increase the overall budget, of course. So 16 billion for the ERC. Then uh, we also have another 10 billion, more than 10 billion for the European Innovation Council and 3 billion for the uh, EIT. And these instruments follow both a bottom-up and a top-down uh, approach uh, when it comes to uh, really uh, uh, achieving their goals. So the ERC is focusing, of course, on uh, purely bottom-up approaches, and I'll give you some information later on. EIC is uh, having uh, uh, instruments, uh, funding schemes that are both bottom-up and top-down, and the EIT is a top-down uh, instrument of Horizon uh, Europe. And I think we need both approaches. We need both bottom-up and top-down if we are talking about uh, uh, really uh, increasing the competitiveness of Europe. Now, let me begin with the ERC give you some information about how the ERC uh, functions and uh, some, of, uh, some information about its uh, funding schemes. As I said, uh, it's endowed with a budget of uh, 16 billion euro, 2.3 billion euro per year, uh, as compared to 13 billion euro for the previous framework program, Horizon 2020, and uh, 7.5 billion euro for uh, FP7. Now, it focuses uh, on uh, providing support to individual scientists, so it's PI-driven. It's like the NIH R01 grants, let's say. No networks here, no consortia. Uh, there's global peer review to evaluate science and select the best proposals. Uh, it's purely bot bottom-up, as I said, and it supports frontier research in all fields of science, ranging from physical sciences and engineering to life sciences to uh, social sciences and humanities. So the whole spectrum. And it does so through uh, three major uh, uh, granting schemes. 
starting grants uh, and consolidator grants focusing on young researchers, new PIs, either right after their postdoc or uh, consolidating their career in around uh, the <coughs> mid stages of their career, and advanced grants that are open to anyone, not just uh, uh, senior researchers, but also junior researchers, anyone can apply. And in addition to that, we also have synergy grants. These are grants uh, that are, uh, targeting uh, fundamental uh, major questions, major challenges in, uh, in science. And there, uh, two to four uh, PIs can collaborate and uh, tackle a, a very uh, important and uh, challenging question, uh, providing, of course, substantial uh, funding, uh, for example, ranging from 1.5 million euro for five years up to 10 million euro for six years. This is quite substantial, especially for a country like Greece. And uh, I think, interestingly enough, uh, the ERC also has a, a, a specific program that is aimed at facilitating, fostering innovation. Because, of course, through excellent science, you expect that there will be uh, uh, ideas that can be exploited. There will be innovation. So there is also a tool called, called uh, Proof of Concept that provides support, 150,000 euro for patent searches, uh, exploitation uh, of research results, uh, perhaps setting up a, a startup, etc. And the ERC is focusing on the most dynamic part of the scientific community, which is young, young scientists. So about two-thirds of funding actually are directed towards uh, uh, young researchers, as you can see here. And I'm not just talking about the PIs themselves. We have there two, uh, two schemes, uh, consolidator and starting grants, but also postdocs and graduate students that work in the laboratories of uh, ERC-funded uh, scientists. And now, what has come out of this, if we are going to uh, really assess uh, the impact, uh, did the ERC really make a dent in the universe? I think it's obvious that it did. And uh, more, more relevant to what we are discussing today, I think over 400 startups uh, were created through um, uh, research carried out by ERC-funded scientists. And this was not even the primary objective of the ERC. The ERC was not set up to achieve this, but this came out as a, uh, uh, a consequence of, of funding excellent research. And as you can see, uh, even Nobel Prizes, Fields Medals, uh, Wolf Prizes, etc., many other uh, prestigious awards were um, um, bestowed on uh, scientists that were uh, uh, supported by the ERC and got their, uh, their prize because of research that was supported by the ERC. So fine, uh, we have an instrument that really supports the first step, the step of converting euros to knowledge. This is what the ERC does. But uh, how about the second step then of converting knowledge to, to money, to euros, wealth, and, and, and jobs. And here is uh, why we need the EIC and EIT. These are instruments, these are tools that are directed, that are designed to actually f uh, facilitate that, uh, that second step. And uh, of course, this comes out of a, of a very uh, important realization that I think is also relevant to what is happening to Greece now. So, uh, although the EU has consolidated its global position as a science leader, as a research leader, still it lags behind when it comes to translating this knowledge to innovation, uh, products and services. For example, we were talking about artificial intelligence. Europe is really a leader when it comes to uh, uh, artificial intelligence research, but is is innovation coming out of it? Is, are, are products being generated? Are uh, new services coming to, um, uh, to the market? No. At least not to the extent that we would like, at least not to the extent that is happening in the US, for example, or in, in, uh, in China. And this is uh, exemplified by a couple of indicators. For example, uh, uh, only about 8% of the so-called unicorn companies, companies that have valuation of more than a billion uh, euros, are uh, European companies residing in Europe, uh, for, as opposed to the US, where we have almost half of the, of the world's uni unicorns uh, being uh, uh, stationed, being uh, located in the US. And the intensity of business R&D, research and development in Europe is rather low, about 1.3% uh, in comparison to more than 2% in the United States. 
And that's why we have a very, I think, <laughs> interesting, but rather worrying, rather, rather uh, alarming phenomenon, which is the so-called uh, idea uh, uh, drain. We're talking about brain drain, but there's also this concept of idea drain. We also have it in Greece here. And I'm going to give you some uh, information about that in a minute. Which means that we create innovation here, but it is exploited elsewhere because that's where the tools, that's where the, the legislation, that's where uh, the, the environment is more, more um, uh, conducive to, to doing so. So uh, very uh, brilliant, I think, innovative ideas that originated in Europe are actually exploited in the US or elsewhere in the, in the world. So what is really holding back? Uh, European uh, innovation. I think there are three things that we can uh, locate, three things that we can identify. The first is innovation performance. Actually, uh, we lack uh, 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 the kind of innovation that is disruptive and breakthrough and creates new markets. This is something that we lack or we don't have to the extent that we should. The second is innovation funding. In Europe, uh, we have a shortage of instruments that actually allow uh, innovation to scale up and become uh, uh, truly globally competitive. And we have a fragmented uh, uh, innovation ecosystem, which is compartmentalized, it's uh, nationalized in, uh, to, to a large extent, and that is, uh, of course, a problem when it comes to flow of, uh, of capital, flow of information, etc. So this is what the two instruments, uh, EIC and EIT, are, 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 are aiming to, to overcome. I'll give you some information about the European Innovation Council and then about the EIT. So the EIT was set up to uh, support disruptive breakthrough innovations. And it does so through three uh, uh, major schemes. I'll tell you about that in a minute. But uh, it is focusing on technology readiness level. So these three instruments are actually designed to uh, support different stages of the development of a, an innovative idea from the idea, from the project to, uh, to the market. The EIC uh, uh, has a budget of 10.1 billion euros for the seven year period of Horizon uh, Europe, as you can see. And uh, it implements a strategy by using an independent board of innovators, uh, uh, which is the, ERC, the EIC uh, Council. Uh, that uh, uh, designs the strategy. It is designed to be a one-stop shop, both for grants and for equity, uh, have an agile and flexible, uh, less bureaucratic mechanism of uh, uh, dispersing these, uh, these funds, of course, and fast track, because innovation can't wait, as we know, uh, together with uh, the European Institute of Innovation and Technology are part of Pillar 3, as I said. So, when it comes to, uh, to funding schemes, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm saying this because we can participate in uh, those schemes that I'm telling you. Greece can participate. And uh, one of the reasons I'm uh, reporting to you today about these uh, instruments is to increase awareness about those instruments. We need to increase our national participation. Greece is not benefiting as much as it should and it could out of, out of these instruments. So uh, just, just for your information, as I said, we have three uh, schemes, uh, Pathfinder, Transition, and Accelerator. You see who can uh, participate, what kind of TRL is required, and there are also prizes uh, that can be dispersed. And that's it for the, for the EIC. Let's go now to the EIT. The EIT is actually catering to uh, the so-called knowledge triangle. So we have universities, we have research centers, and then we have entrepreneurship, we have companies. And the EIT is uh, really aiming to um, uh, boost uh, circulation around this triangle. So uh, through, through its instruments, I'm going to, to give you some more information. It now is Europe's largest innovation community, uh, has a, a budget of uh, more than 3 billion euro uh, to do that, and focuses both on uh, supporting education. So for example, universities and Greek universities can participate. Businesses, Greek businesses again can participate. And of course, innovation uh, driven projects, research as well. Research centers can participate. This is done through a, a unique um, uh, way uh, of implementing such, such strategies, which uh, calls for the creation of the so-called knowledge and innovation communities or KICS, the EIT KICS. Maybe some of you 
are aware, maybe uh, you know uh, these instruments. There are up, uh, up until now nine kicks. Uh, very recently, just uh, this year, we've had the, 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 the EIT culture and creativity kick that was created. But you see, these kicks are uh, aimed at uh, strategically important uh, areas uh, and challenges, uh, some of them having to do with sustainable development goals. For example, uh, climate, digital, you know, energy, health, etc. I'm not going to go into details. Uh, because of, uh, of time. And this is really creating impact across Europe. This kind of, 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 of scheme is creating jobs, for example, is creating partnerships, uh, is also fostering education, graduate uh, programs, and uh, of course, creation of new products and, and, uh, and services. Just a couple of examples. Out of EIT funding, we've had unicorns now emerging in Europe. So startups, actually, that uh, achieved the, uh, the level of a unicorn through EIT funding. Uh, lithium aviation, these are just some examples. You can Google them up. North Vault, uh, very important uh, when it comes to energy. Uh, health, uh, climate kick uh, uh, have also uh, generated such uh, uh, unicorns. Now, I think it's also relevant, and it, it might perhaps have more uh, importance for Greece, that the EIT is focusing on higher education as well. So, for example, the objective here is to uh, uh, increase uh, 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 the, the, the type of uh, mentorship that we require in order to change the, the mentality towards uh, innovation, towards uh, um, entrepreneurship in the environment of a university. So this is called the Higher Education Institution Initiative. Uh, it has already actually uh, started. Uh, already uh, 24 projects have been uh, supported, uh, 1.2 million euros. But now we also have uh, the second uh, wave of, uh, of calls. Uh, 40 projects are going to be supported. This is going to start to, to be launched in November. Uh, there will be uh, um, uh, webinars and information uh, um, uh, events, uh, uh, and I hope that Greece, of course, can uh, capitalize on these instruments. Now, coming to Greece, after, after what we've seen what Europe has done and is doing to, to foster innovation and entrepreneurship, what do we need to do here in Greece? As, as I mentioned already, uh, we are quite weak. Actually, we are uh, hopelessly weak uh, in the second step, when it comes to the second step. But we might have some uh, capacity towards uh, the, uh, converting money to knowledge. We, we can do uh, uh, research, although, as I said, we are not at the level that we should be. And as a result, Greece is uh, ranked as moderate innovator, as you see here. This is the, the European Innovation Scoreboard for uh, last year, for which year we have complete uh, uh, data. Greece has been a moderate innovator for the past eight years and is actually always in that position. I checked it out. I went and checked each and every year. The, you know, the, the European Innovation Scoreboard is around for just eight years, and that's why I'm saying eight years. Greece is not moving. Cyprus uh, has uh, now almost reached the level uh, of strong innovator, and we are below. Nevertheless, it's not all grim and bad. For example, Greece uh, does well when it comes to uh, research, as I said, although, again, uh, we are not at the level where, uh, we should be. Uh, for, in, a, in a nature um, uh, study, uh, uh, it was found that about 1.13% uh, of publications coming out of, of, of Greek universities and research institutions end up in high-profile journals such as Nature, Cell, Science. And this compares well, for example, uh, we are above Canada, France, Italy, etc. Of course, we are below the Netherlands, Sweden, uh, Germany, and the US, of course. But still, we are doing decently well. So what do we have? What kind of materials do we have at hand that we can work with? We have pockets of excellence in various universities and research centers in, in Greece. We have good performance in terms of securing high competitive funding from international sources. We do this well out of need, of course. And we are very effective at training young scientists. We always say about our uh, graduates, be that undergraduates who finish and go out to do the 
PhDs or PhDs who go out to do postdocs. Those are the best people available globally, I think. So we should be proud about that. We have that. And then we have highly skilled human potential, uh, of course, found in various universities and research centers. Nevertheless, uh, we are uh, really uh, hum uh, humbled and uh, impeded by perennial structure problems and their consequences. And this is not just something that uh, we see now. This is not, uh, you know, I've, I've been in Greece as an independent scientist from 2001. It's the same thing. It, these, are, these are problems that I think, you know, we need to really seriously look about uh, how to, 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 to solve them. So we have an inadequate national framework for research and innovation. We need a, a, a flexible uh, legislature that uh, will really solve the problems of, of fragmentation, of bureaucracy, etc. It's not simple. We also have inconsistency and discontinuity in terms of uh, national research policies for funding. Uh, this is to some extent being rectified in recent years. Elidec is there, for example. Uh, but we are far from achieving regularity, that the regularity that we need, that we have at the, at the European level. We'll still, we still need to work uh, uh, really uh, about that. And then uh, the, the national funding is really minuscule. It's, it's not enough. There is a constant problem of underfunding. And it's fragmented, as I said. Uh, and there is no overarching policy that directs how this, this funding is distributed. So we have calls depending on uh, what money is available, where the money is coming from, etc. I mean, this is uh, burgeoning and I'm not going to go into all the details. There is, of course, uh, an, an absence of uh, perspective or of long-term strategies. We have loss of human capital, brain drain, is really, as you see here, uh, the Guardian had an article. This is the world's biggest brain drain that we have here in Greece. And we also have the uh, uh, really ab abhorrible uh, innovate here and exploit elsewhere uh, phenomenon. It's something that we should uh, really be worried about. So we really need instruments that would allow us uh, to bridge this gap. These are just some of the instruments. I'm not going to go uh, through them uh, in detail. Uh, we, we can capitalize on what we do well, although we can still improve. And I, have, I, need, I want to emphasize this. We can still improve on that. We are not perfect. But we need to work on those negative uh, aspects. So what do we need? We need governance. We need long-term commitment and support. Uh, towards attaining critical mass. I've heard this term earlier. Actually, we don't have critical mass in any of the, of, of the fields of study. I don't know if we can attain critical mass, really. Maybe we need to work a different model, a different perspective. Greece as a country uh, is, a, is, is rather small. Maybe this is not a realistic goal. We're talking about critical mass, but maybe we, we need to move away from that. Maybe we need to work on uh, internationalization, on openness, on links with the Greek di diaspora, and not only, but also uh, research institutions abroad. And we need to establish a big ambitious project of international visibility. We need to become known of doing something extremely well, better than anyone else. This is what Israel has done. This is what Finland has done. All those countries that we will be discussing later on. And of course, we need measures for bridging the funding gap. This is important. We need to work with instruments such as EIF, EIB, RRF, etc. I don't know. So both steps need enhancement, need augmentation. Not just uh, innovation, but also research, because we need this raw material. And I couldn't resist, you know, to close presenting the case of fourth. I, I'm here as the chairman of uh, the Foundation for Research and Technology as well. And how we try to do this at the Foundation for Research and Technology. So for those of you who don't know, FORTH is a large research institution, um, nine institutes, five of them in Heraklion, one in Patras, one in Ioannia, you see them there. We also have, in addition to those institutes, uh, focusing on creating knowledge, so focusing on the first step, we also want to create a value chain 
that will allow us to translate this research that is done uh, at, at, at force institutes into products and services. So, because it's not enough to have uh, uh, excellent uh, frontier basic and applied research, you also need to have those tools that will allow you to do the translation. And that's why we've created the Science and Technology Park of Greece. It's an incubator where companies, uh, high-tech companies, but also startups, spin-offs, or forth, uh, can uh, work together with research labs so that we can uh, facilitate this osmosis between entrepreneurship and research. We've established the Praxi Network, which is a technology transfer organism, uh, now providing services not just to FORTH, but to the entire scientific community of Greece, universities, other research centers. And through the action of these two uh, factors, essentially what we want is eventually to create spin-out companies uh, that will generate value. And capitalize on, of course, on intellectual property patents, uh, as you see there. Just some things, the Science and Technology Park, you see it here, uh, focusing on uh, providing an environment that will foster innovation, especially uh, youth entrepreneurship. This is something that we are focusing on, mentoring. Uh, this is also important. And uh, these are some of the most important activities of our Science and Technology Park. Uh, the Praxi Network, uh, of course, has, uh, is targeting the link between research and industry, the promotion of innovation entrepreneurship, and the provision of uh, high added value services. These are just some of these services. For example, technology transfer services, business innovation, uh, participation in various uh, European organizations, etc. And through this uh, integration, uh, we've, uh, since our uh, force establishment, been able to uh, really um, uh, create uh, spin-offs, some of them success stories. I'm sure that you uh, know Fortnet, a spin-off of the Institute of Computer Science that literally brought the internet to Greece back in the 80s, early 90s. Recently, Advent, a uh, 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 spin-off company of the Institute of Computer of, of Chemical and Engineering Sciences in Patras, uh, specializing on hydrogen uh, technologies, uh, very relevant to current uh, challenges. Uh, uh, entered the, the NASDAQ, the, in the New York stock market, with a valuation of $600 uh, million. Uh, dollars, uh, again, a success story. And even during the pandemic, we've been able to create uh, spin-offs that actually uh, address some of the challenges of the pandemic. Uh, Biopix, one startup that uh, um, uh, brought to the market innovative um, uh, systems, uh, devices for the detection of pathogens, including COVID. Biomimetic, EnzyQuest, uh, PC nanomaterials. I see here Aristos Oxiadis. He is supporting some of these uh, uh, startups, so he knows very well. I'm sure he can tell you more. And I'll finish with this because I think it is important uh, uh, and demonstrates uh, how investment in research can actually have substantial returns for the country, even with the strictest, driest, and more cynical terms of uh, financial sustainability. So, uh, I'm giving you this, uh, this is actually the fourth income since its creation. It was created back in 1983. So, uh, until 2020, for which year we have uh, definitive data, there was a state investment of more than a bill, uh, 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 half a billion uh, uh, euro. And this came, you know, from uh, those uh, 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 parts of the budget. As you can see, the regular budget uh, was 228 uh, about million. I'm not going to give you all the details. But with that money, with more than a uh, little bit more than uh, half a billion uh, uh, euro, what, what has happened? Fourth researchers have attracted an additional uh, funding uh, coming from uh, international and national sources amounting together with the value of infrastructure and the private income by selling uh, products and services and uh, stock sales, of course, uh, uh, to 611 million euro. So more, with an investment of half a billion euro, more than 600 uh, million. And we are not counting here the value of research, the research results that were generated, the value of training, the scientists that got training out of, this, of these activities, which is, I don't think, can be counted or is, is something that we can put a price on. 
And with this, I'll finish. Uh, I think what we need is a vision uh, in the long-term plan here in Greece that focuses on quality, on added value, on meritocracy, and on diversification. We need to implement this, these principles, and we also need to learn from the European uh, paradigm. There is potential, and I'm hoping that in the coming years, and also with your help, we can really materialize this, uh, these objectives. Thank you. Thank you.